In most buildings, including homes, electricity is distributed from larger power sources to smaller individual loads and utilization equipment using components called panel boards, load centers, or switchboards. These components are very similar in look and function, but have some variations that we will discuss. All three have an enclosure. They have incoming power section, including conductor terminals. They all have some sort of bus system, which is a solid piece of conductor, usually aluminum or copper, that distributes the power to the smaller loads. And they have some sort of overcurrent protection, such as a circuit breaker or fuses, and a connection point or terminal for the outgoing smaller circuits. While many of these are designed for installation indoors in dry locations, some are located outdoors or in wet locations, and they have special enclosures suited for that application to keep the elements away from live electrical parts. We should understand the differences between panel boards and load centers. Although they are similar in function, there are some significant differences to be aware of. Generally speaking, when we refer to a panel board, we're talking about a single or three-phase apparatus that has a back box, an electrical interior, either a main overcurrent protection, like a circuit breaker, or an incoming lug section. The interior has bus bars that connect to circuit breakers that are bolted on or screwed on, making a solid mechanical electrical connection. Panel boards normally handle higher amperage loads than load centers and are found in commercial, institutional, and industrial applications, places such as schools, hospitals, factories, and office buildings. Load centers are almost the same as panel boards, except the branch circuit breakers usually snap in or push on to the bus bar using the spring or pressure system holding the circuit breaker into place. Load centers are designed for lighter loads than panel boards and are found in homes, small offices, and are also used for temporary power distribution, like on a construction site. All conductors, wires and cables usually, can only carry so much current safely before they begin to heat up from being overloaded. This can be dangerous to equipment and people. To prevent this from happening, devices such as circuit breakers and fuses are designed and used to stop the flow of current when the maximum amount is reached. The circuit breaker is a piece of electrical equipment that opens up the circuit and protects it at the same time. Circuit breakers normally have mechanical pieces inside of them that assist in opening the circuit when the current gets too high. Usually a spring mechanism activated by heat facilitates the opening of the circuit. Let's take a look at some of the main components of a circuit breaker. The frame. Circuit breaker's physical housing, or frame, as it's most commonly referred to, must provide the integrity needed to properly withstand the interruption process and achieve the desired interrupting. Occasionally, the interruption process has a great deal of electrical force and energy, like during a short circuit. Therefore, the circuit breaker is built to withhold these very high energy incidents. The frame also provides for insulation and isolation of the current path, offering personal protection near the equipment during operation. The frame or housing of the circuit breaker may be made of metal or a strong insulating material such as plastic or composite resins contacts and operating mechanism. The circuit breaker's contacts provide a means for closing the circuit inside the breaker. They also provide a method for opening the circuit. They are made of highly conductive metal, sometimes silver. The operating mechanism is otherwise known as a handle. Some circuit breakers can open or close multiple conductors at the same time. These are called multi-pole breakers, such as the three-phase circuit breaker. It is designed such that three sets of contacts open or close at the same time. The trip unit. Circuit breakers are sized based on maximum voltage, interrupting amperage, the desired level at which they shut off, and withstand capability. The trip unit is specifically designed to operate the circuit breaker at the maximum allowable amperage. Arc chute. Sometimes circuit breakers have a method to extinguish or contain an electrical arc. This is known as an arc chute. There are a few types of circuit breakers that you will see used in electrical distribution. The two main types are smaller molded case circuit breakers, like this one, used in panel boards and load centers, and larger power circuit breakers, also known as insulated case breakers. These are used on large circuits and equipment that use high current. 
A switchboard is similar to a panel board or load center in the respect that it takes a larger feeder and breaks it down into smaller circuits. In some cases, the smaller circuits are circuits feeding panel boards or load centers. Some feed larger utilization loads, such as HVAC loads, motors, or other large equipment. Switchboards are larger than panel boards and sometimes freestanding. The branch overcurrent devices are either circuit breakers or switch units that have fuses inside of them. Switchboards may have a main device to disconnect the power, either a mechanical disconnect style switch or a main circuit breaker. Occasionally, switchboards may have more than one incoming power source to provide redundancy to critical power loads. Switchboards can also have specialized equipment in them that monitor and control loads that they serve. Power monitors and meters help the owner and operator know the amount of electricity they are using. Switchboards may also be made up of assembled pieces, also known as sections, ganged together to form one large switchboard assembly. There are many rules, sometimes called codes, that dictate the way panel boards, load centers, and switchboards can be installed and used. These codes help assure that the equipment is straight and plumb. All equipment should be installed straight up and down and parallel to the floor whenever possible. This makes it easier to work on and join up with other work in a neat fashion. Not installed in a hazardous location, such as wet or damp location, or an area that has other hazards like corrosives and explosive gases that could damage the equipment. In an area that lends itself to safe operation. Areas where the operator is not exposed to unsafe conditions or hazards, such as moving equipment or falling hazards. Easily accessible. It should be easily within reach so that the operator can shut off power quickly if they need to.